Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial for M Creator. Uh, today I am going to be showing you how to basically create a very simple and not too advanced block. Just in a future tutorial I'll show you how to basically uh, use uh, 3D models and stuff like that. No, not create them, but uh, get them from Minecraft. So, you can. so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the, the workshop tab, then resources, and we need to import a block texture. I'm just going to go to my desktop. I have dark metal already made. Uh, so what you want to do is go back to your mod elements and then go and click next or the plus arrow. Go to block, give it a name, so dark metal and click OK. Now you're presented with a few different settings. Before you start selecting your textures over here, uh, if you select the light blue box right here, it's going to select all your textures. Um, I'll present that in just a second. If you do say um, a single texture here, then you just need to select the bottom one. And if you have a cross model, that's, um, I believe it's just a single texture down here as well. If you have uh, custom models, then it will show up here as well. Uh, you have to import those through your thing. I'm going to do a separate tutorial on that for sure. Uh, transparency is um, if your block is transparent or not, if it is or has block dimensions and you're going to want to select um, either translucent, cutout map, cutout, uh, or if it's just a solid block, you don't need to do any of that. Your block dimensions are where your hitbox for the block is. Um, this is uh, between 1 and 0, I believe, and uh, I have a guide on my website. I'll leave the link down in the description uh, to how to measure basically all these things and uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you have any special information that you want to show in the description of the block then you can type it in here. So selecting the texture we're just going to click on the left uh, blue box. We're going to select our texture and as you can see it updates all the other ones. If we were to select any other box then we would have to do it manually uh, for each texture. Uh, but the blue box has uh, the ability when you're first making your block to update all textures. So we're not going to need to change anything, we're just going to make a really simple block like this. Uh, we need to give it a GUI name, so we're going to call it Dark Metal Block. And you want to set the hardness. Now the hardness is um, how strong the block is um, uh, to break. So how long will it take to break? If it's going to take a longer amount you want to increase the hardness. If it's the resistance is basically for if you um, want uh, like what's the resistance to explosions. Uh, there are two really handy wiki pages that are also provided in the description that you can um, basically look up the equivalent to things that are on um, for vanilla Minecraft blocks and stuff like that. So there are a few wiki pages. Does the block have gravity? Does it act as sand? If it does or gravel, then you want to select that. Uh, what box is or what tab is it in the creative inventory generally you want it under building blocks but you might want it under something else uh, so the can plants grow on this block this basically um, any block that expands the block plant type it will be able to plant on it so for example if it's um, a type of plant you've made then it'll be able to grow on top of it. I think this is similar to um, if you were to place it on grass or something like that then it will be able to grow on top of that kind of block. Uh, is it a beacon base? So is it going to basically act like diamond blocks or any other block that you can use for a beacon? Uh, any other metal blocks? 
uh, can provide power? Uh, can this block um, connect to redstone? If it can connect to redstone, then select this. Uh, this isn't um, needed in order to actually create a redstone pulse system, though. Uh, enchant bonus. Uh, this is for making the block uh, like bookshelves. If you want to select the the amount of bonus uh, power if it's nearer in the enchantment table you can play with this it basically turns the block into something like a bookshelf light opacity is um, the transparency of the block zero i believe is solid 255 is um transparent i think i'm not sure so materials, um, I do have a resource, a new resource uh, that I can provide to kind of explain how everything works. Um, it's pretty straightforward, um, but certain blocks have certain properties. Uh, if I open up a new tab, uh, there are these little properties here. So pistons can, can be replaced, can burn. Uh, these are just some of the um, properties for certain ones. Uh, this is on Vanilla or Minecraft Wiki, so you can. I'll leave the link for that in the description. So it'll basically explain a little bit more about the material. So these are the materials that will be affected by um, certain variables and stuff like that. So, uh, for example, um, say fire could be destroyed by water and that's pretty much it um, it's good for making crops and stuff like that as well so it's a handy block for that um, this is transparent you know just certain things like that wood can burn so can wool um, I think plants can as well uh, stone you do need a tool so this will require a the pickaxe or whatever to be used um, so even if you had this set to zero uh, and you would technically could break it with your hand uh, you would still need a pickaxe in order to break it so that would mean you would need a wood tool in order to break it all right so tick rate this is how Often the block will update. Um, for example, if you're using an update tick, then this will be the delay for that particular procedure. And uh, you can set this pretty high. Um, I'm not sure how high, but uh, 100 is, I think 20 is five seconds or maybe one second in like ticks. So, I think like 300 is 15 seconds or something like that. Default state is 10. So this is the type of tool that will be able to destroy it. So tool, pick axe, axe, or shovel, those are the ones that are in the game right, or in the settings right now. Um, can it be affected by silk touch? Will it um, basically drop if it drops another block, will it be affected by silk touch? So, like glass, if you have silk touch enabled, it will basically drop glass blocks rather than just breaking glass. If it's that kind of type of block that you're going for, then you want this enabled. Uh, does it drop itself then, or doesn't drop itself? If this is true, then what you want to do is select what kind of block you want for it to drop or an item. Um, for example, if we were to select iron and we were to drop a mount, so we just want one of these to drop, we need to select that, we need to select the block, and we need to select the amount. All right, so sound on steps, this is what the block will sound like when you're walking on it. Luminescence or luminosity. Um, this basically is how bright the block is. If it is similar to a torch or a redstone torch, then you want to play around with the, the light uh, settings here. 
is block unbreakable um, because if you don't want players to destroy it like bedrock then what you want to do is check that box if you want them to walk through it like flower or um, crops or something like that then you want to check that block or that box and the harvest level now this is a little bit more advanced but I'll cover it as best as I can zero is for wood slash hand tools um, one is for stone, two is for iron, and I believe three is for diamond. Um, gold, I think, is equivalent to iron, so that would be under two. Um, but yeah, if you want, in most cases, if it's like something like wood, then you can basically just have it be broken by hand uh, with it being set to zero. Uh, if you want to use, say, a stone tool, then you have to set it to one, and so on. So we're just going to set it to rock. And um, particles, so it's pretty straightforward. This one, it's not too complicated. Uh, for the spawning particles, you would check this box, and then you would go and select the type of particle you want it to produce. And if you... Um, want it to change the spread type then or the particle shape then what you want to do is uh, select between one of these four particle shapes and the particle spawning radius how far away from the block will it spawn this is on all six sides uh, particle amount how many particles will spawn and particle spawning condition this may change in the future but currently what you want to do is uh, create a global uh, variable and have a condition that way and then it will show up in this list okay moving on so if you have a um, if you're going for a procedure for MBT data uh, what you want to do is check this box here and um, enable the inventory uh, it also makes it a entity so it will basically give it a um, MBT data structure. Uh, it says here that blocks that can store MBT data. MBT, uh, data. So it's for inventory and variables for blocks. You'll need this checked. So um, the inventory size, if you're going for an inventory, you're going to need to make a GUI, add slots, um, and so on. That's more of an advanced tutorial for blocks, but um, you would select how many slots you're going to have at the maximum slot size, how many items will be able to fit in those slots. Uh, does the item drop if when the thing is destroyed? If not, then it'll just remove the item and uh, enable block com output comparator data. Uh, if that's true, then what blocks are used by Hopper? So you basically select this, uh, type in the number, such as, say, slot 1. Then you would do that and separate it by comma. And go to slot 2, slot 3, slot 4, whatever slots you want to be impacted. So I'm just going to disable that and go click next. So procedures, uh, these are things that are basically um, events. Uh, it's a new event system for AmCreator. Um, this is pretty advanced stuff. Um, but if you were to create a new procedure, then what you would do is you would build it from scratch and you know add if statements or anything like that. You just drag it on to where you need it. And then you would say place block and add a diamond in the current location. So if it's this will basically update the block on every 10 seconds. So if it's day in the world, then I'll update it to a diamond block. That's just a very simple procedure system. And um, moving on, uh, what we're going to be explaining here is. Um, how to generate ore such as um, 
like iron ore or stuff like that. So what you want to do is you want to select this and you want to select your type of dimension that you want it to spawn in. And from there, you're going to need to select what kind of blocks it can replace. So stone is by default and restrict to biome. This is if you want to restrict it to a specific biome. If so, you want to select what biome you want to restrict it to. And I'm just going to select jungle. And the frequency on chunks. Now this is um, the average patch of ore in each chunk. So how many chunks will basically up to what number will so what chunk so what basically frequency on chunks mean is um, how many um, or veins will basically uh, spawn on in a vanilla chunk uh, so if we were to go and set it to 20, so 20 might spawn at average for one vanilla chunk. If you set it to one, then it would be very similar to diamonds. You'll only be able to find one. Um, default is 10. Now frequency on specific chunk, this is how many are um, the average in a vein. So. I'm not entirely sure how many actually spawn for, say, coal or diamond. I have come across 8 for diamond. I think I've come across something like 12 as well, but it's, it's extremely rare. Um, however, if you're going for something like a regular ore, it's generally, unless it's like coal or whatever, it's around 8 or 9 um, per vein. So you might want it to something around, I don't know, eight, and then have it uh, for something like diamond, set it to one. If it's something like iron, you might want to set it to something like 10. And um, over here, you have your controls for measuring the height and the minimum and maximum. As you can see here, your minimum height is set to 110. So that's right here, as you can see, if we go down, you can see that the number's going down. And this is your minimum height here, that's your maximum height. So if we raise it up here, as you can see, it's gonna spawn between level 30 and level 60. So that will basically where it'll be spawning. Uh, we can also set it to one, and then it will spawn just above bedrock. And next, and that's basically all you need to do to create a very simple block. Um, now, uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below. Let me know how I did on the tutorial, and I will see you guys next week with a new tutorial.